Hey everyone, Wayne here. If you're watching this video right away when it's uploaded to YouTube, um, you're seeing it on December 7th, anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Uh, otherwise, you may see it later, but that's all right. Um, this is, I thought that since it is December and December 7th, I wanted to do a game on Pearl Harbor. Um, there's not a ton of them out there. There's only really a few. Um, so this is an interesting one that I had picked up just last year. Finally got a chance to play it a couple times, and I wanted to show it off to you guys. Um, this is going to be more of a casual playthrough. Um, this is not going to be a, it's not a tutorial review, at least not a full one. I mean, I'm sure you're going to get an idea of what I think of the game and all that. But um, this is kind of a casual, game, a casual gameplay. Um, I have a couple of these Let's Plays where I have more casual. A few of them I've done on my channel, and this is going to be one of those where I'm actually probably checking the rule book and... Uh, you know, making sure I'm following the game right. Do not hold me to this. I'm not trying to teach you the game. I just want to kind of show it off. Want to look at it myself. Keep learning it. Just have some fun playing it. Show it off to you guys. So, um, the game we are looking at today is Day of Infamy. Um, this is obviously about the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. Game designed by Paul Rohrbaugh. Rohrbaugh. Graphics, Bruce Urian. Um, published by... Uh, high flying dice games so this game is one that is available <laughs> pretty cheap from it from the high flying dice games website it is a kind of like a print and play generally i don't really do print and plays but you can buy a version that i guess it's not a print and play it does come um comes with everything like printed out already for you not that expensive but i paid a little extra and I got two different things. One, I got the counters pre-mounted so that I didn't have to put them together myself. Um, and then the other thing is that I got a, a deck of cards with art by Tim Allen. So the cards, uh, the deck you would need is actually just a poker deck or part of a poker deck. So this is, well, basically replacing that. So if you want to, you could buy it for game for super cheap off the website. Um, it comes with everything printed, but then you have to cut out the counters and they're going to be on paper. And then you have to come up with your own poker deck. Or if you spend a little extra, you can get the counters mounted. And a little extra more than that, you get the deck of cards. They come. It comes in sheets. You have to cut them out yourself. So it's not a full like product, but it, like it's all ready to go. But at the same time, it's also super cheap. Um, check it out on the website, and you'll see what I'm talking about by G. I'm literally, I think it's like $7 for the game before you look at either car cards or mounted counters. So um, the game here, Day of Infamy, it's technically a two-player game. However, it's very solitaire friendly. In fact, I don't think I'd ever want to play a two-player um, just because the options as the U.S. player are so few. Really, all the options and the decision-making uh, choices come to the uh, Japanese player. The American player is very, very reactive. It's very little, very few times you actually have obvious choices where, you know, you have different paths to take. Or say, not obvious choices, right? Where there's different paths to take. Generally speaking, it's going to be... The U.S. player is going to have maybe one thing they can do. Maybe nothing. And there's going to be a lot of turns where they can't do anything. Or it's going to be really obvious what they're going to do. So, um, in fact, the game has rules that will have them do certain things automatically. So, it's like... It's really... I think, honestly, almost could just be a solitaire game. There's very little decision-making for the American player. So, play it solitaire. Um, that's what I've been doing. That's what we're going to play, of course. Um, I have it all set up here. You have the map here of Pearl Harbor. You've got things like um, the Fort Island target area, U.S. Naval Air Station. You have you have Battleship Row right here with the USS Nevada. It has its own counter. It's the only one that has its own counter um, for the Americans. You have some tank farms. You have Hickam Field here. Um, yeah, and that's it on the map. And then you also have these, uh, you can see these locations, A, B, C, D. Those are areas that when the Nevada... If it does break free from Battleship Row, it's going to be traveling down that way. And if we get our uh, Kai, Kai Ru, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, submarine, it'll be, well, midget submarine would be, would become an DC kind of moving that way to attack either USS Nevada or Battleship Row. So available Japanese aircraft on this display. We have track, a bunch of track markers, keeping track of US alert level, anti-aircraft level, and then the damage caused along with victory points and the game turns. So I think that's it for explaining. Let's go ahead and dive in. I don't know if we're going to complete the whole game. We'll play for a while. We'll just kind of have some fun with it and uh, see how it goes. So, all right. Um, very beginning of the game, first turn. You start flipping your cards. You've got your deck all ready to go. And I'll kind of explain things as we go. Again, this is not a full tutorial, but, you know, I want you guys to understand what's going on. So we're playing as a Japanese here. We're playing as both sides, technically, but the focus is on the Japanese. 
We want to get off some attacks. We want to cause as much damage as we can to Battleship Row, Fort Island, Hickam Field, um, and possibly the tank farm, although we cannot attack that right away. We have to wait, uh, just because historically they did not go after the, the tank farm. So let's go ahead and start. First card draw, see what happens. All right, so here's what we got. We got a, uh, and this is where, so normally it would be a poker deck. You'd have the numbers, and it would basically be divided by two. So this would be a 10, 10 number, um, and then you go ahead and divide it by two. You get five U.S. player actions. However, um, with this cool little deck, from Tim Allen with his art, so he gets to kind of put together, and you get to see, oh, show it to you guys there, um, so you guys can see a little art on there, I know it's harder when it's farther away, five U.S. player actions, so this would be where the U.S. player gets to go for five actions, however, on the first turn, he's extremely limited, and in fact, there are no actions for him to take, um, he doesn't get any aircraft in the first turn, he potentially has, you see, Warhawks, P-36 Hawk available, but those come later, um, same thing with USS Nevada, can't move yet. Um, the first turn is very much about um, playing for the Japanese. So you draw until you get a Japanese number. So again, another US, this would be US player action, repair, or US or move the Nevada. Well, we can't do any, first there's no damage. Nevada can't move till second turn. And anyway, in the first turn, the first action, you're always drawing until you get to a, not that one, not Japanese player, random event. There we go. So we got a one. Um, so not awesome, but that's okay. So Japanese player action, one. So the Japanese player, we get to conduct one action. Um, it's kind of a bummer we only got a one. So that would be something like, say, we have our... And we have, you can see, set our different aircraft. We have some Zeros. We have some Kate um, torpedo bombers. And we have the Val dive bombers. I would say let's go ahead and get some of these uh, torpedo bombers out there. So with our one action, we can go ahead and move one uh, aircraft onto the map. Okay, so now they can start doing USS, USA player action, repair action, or move the Nevada. Although again, there's no damage yet, so there's nothing to repair. And they can't move the Nevada till the second turn, so nothing will happen there. So you can see why as, I'm, as we're playing how it's like really the US player, it's really more of Japanese player with very obvious reactions from the US. So I would only play it solitaire if I was you. Japanese player random event. We can definitely do that one. So we have a little chart over here. We just roll 2d6. Six, which is, what is that? Uh, John Finn, Doris Miller. The US player can subtract one from any anti aircraft die roll. Okay. So that'll be something we'll have to kind of keep in mind here. Just remember. Okay. Oh, that's the so this is the middle of honor one. We're supposed to leave that out there, so we just remember. Just as a reminder, draw another card. Three US player actions. Again, US has no US player has no actions right now. It's the first turn. Again, nothing for the US. Japanese player random event. We can do that, certainly. I'm hoping for some numbers is what I'm looking for. So, five. No event, all right? So I'm hoping we draw some red numbers. That means Japanese numbers. Okay, US player again. Can't do it. Come on. <laughs> okay, no. Come on. No. There, okay, we got one. We want more than one, but I'll take it, I guess. All right, so we get one action. Um, I'm going to bring another Kate a Torpedo Bomber onto the map with our one action. Draw again. We just play a random event. And we're doing terrible drawing right now for the Japanese. We need some numbers. A three, which is praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Increase the US AA level by one. Oh, that's not good for us. Okay. So anti aircraft level goes up by one, so they're a little more prepared now. We just play a random event check. Bad dice rolls. This is like bad card drawing. Six, seven, no event. All right, draw another one. Use player action two, no actions yet. Nothing they can do. One, nothing they can do. Apparently, it's gonna be all red at the bottom. US two, nothing they can do. There we go. All right, so three. So Japanese player action three. We do three actions. So, what we wanna do, let's. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're going to get another Kate. So we have three, right? You have three. So another Kate. It's going to enter the map. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send both of these Kates to Battleship Row 
to conduct uh, torpedo bombings. So we're going to go ahead and move both of them on to torpedo row. You can see a little red outline. Excuse me, battleship row. <laughs> hopefully torpedo row, if, uh, hopefully for us. Now we're going to conduct, as soon as you move on there, you can go ahead and conduct an attack at the same same action. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's pull up the robot quick. Just going to make sure I don't miss any modifiers. Now, uh, when you're doing a bombing onto Battleship Row, you automatically suffer anti-aircraft fire. Um, if you're over one of the field areas or any other installation, they're called, and it's any other areas, then you only suffer anti-aircraft fire if the U.S. has a player turn and they use an anti-aircraft um, activation. But automatically, you are attacked by anti-aircraft when you're trying to attack uh, Battleship Row. So, um, we're attacked first. So what you do is you go ahead, um, make sure I'm double checking here, okay. Roll a 1d6, so we got a four. So this is, say for this is the first Kate here, bombing, doing his uh, torpedo bombing attack. Um, a four, for torpedo attack it's minus one, so you make it a three. If the die roll result is greater than the US anti-aircraft level, nothing happens. Which anti-aircraft level right now is two, so three or higher, which remember we got a modified three, so nothing happens, so he's not hit. If it had been equal or less, we would have taken a hit. We would have flipped over to our reduced side, but we succeeded. So now we go ahead and roll for our torpedo attack. All right. So we roll a five. We subtract our bomb factor, which is the bottom number. So if you guys can see, I don't think I showed off a, a chip too close yet anyway. Show off to you guys. So the Kate there. So we have our air, so it's TB, torpedo bomber, uh, or LB, level bomber. Um, a one anti-aircraft, and then five is the bomber. And then this would be reduced side with the red stripe. So we're on full strength. We have a five for our bombing factor. So what do we do? We roll to five. Um, we subtract our, bomb, our bombing factor. So we reached a zero. You add the alert or AA, whichever's lower. So alert is lower at one. So we add that. So we're now at one. Um, and then we subtract two if it's a torpedo attack. So one minus two is negative one. So you uh, compare. You look at, you compare the negative one, the final mono number versus what our bombing factor is, which is five. There's a difference of six. Now you have that, and that's how many hits there are. If it had been equal or higher, no hits. So, remember we're at negative one, five, difference is six, have that three, so we get inflict three hits. Um, oh, one thing I did forget, but I don't think it mattered, was our uh, minus one DRM for AA roll. I forgot about that, oops. Oh well, we'll do it, we'll do it on the next one, because the next one's about to attack too. So anyway, three hits. So, simple as that, we did three hits on Battleship Row. So over here, one, two, three, move the marker up to three on Battleship Row. And that's gonna, at the end of the game, add up how many how much damage there is to determine uh, how many uh, victory points the Japanese player gets. So, all right, that was the first Kate there. Second Kate, he's gonna go down and conduct his um, torpedo attack. Now, what we wanna do with him is we wanna go ahead, remember we have that AA, and let's remember that minus one on the die roll. So let's go ahead and roll for anti-aircraft fire because um, we are conducting our attack. So the Americans are shooting. They got a one, um, plus one, or minus one for torpedo attack. That's zero. And then minus one for this, that's negative one. It is equal or less than the AA level. Therefore, we take a hit, unfortunately, for us. So this Kate gets hit. He is reduced. He continues attack. He's not destroyed, but he is reduced. Go ahead and move the out of there. All right, so now we'll go ahead and conduct our actual dive bombing attack. A two minus our three bomb factor. That gives us minus, or excuse me, negative one. Um, negative one, you add in one from here, that's zero. And then we're doing a torpedo, so that's negative. Add uh, or two, take two away. So we're at negative two. Negative two compared to three, the difference of five divided in half is 2.5. And then you always round up to three. So three hits. So just like the other one, actually, one, two, three, because we rolled a little better this time. So we got three. We still got three hits, even though we were, our bomb factor's lower. So um, I know it sounds a little complicated at first, but it's really not. Once you do it a few times, it's not that bad at all. So, 
All right, um, that was that attack there. Let's see. Um, I think it was all of our three actions. Yep, so one, two, three, yep. So we'll flip another card. All right, five, here we go. Now we're start. now we'll be rolling here. So um, let's go ahead and for two of our actions, we're gonna go ahead and remove both of these Kates from the map. Um, just basically bring them back. They cannot come back out this turn though. So I just have to remember that. So that's, I flip them to the side because that shows they can't come back this turn. We have to wait till next turn. All right, um, it was two, we still have three actions, right? So I'll go ahead and send this Kate in here to attack. We have two more. Let's get this last Kate and a Val, Val Dive Bomber. Get him out there too. So again, from here, basically like launching from the aircraft, they enter onto the map. They can't attack yet. This guy was already on the map, so he gets to attack. So go ahead and send this Kate dropping in his uh, torpedoes against Battleship Row here. Um, go ahead and give it a roll. Remember, we get our anti-aircraft fire against us first. Two. Uh, minus one for a torpedo attack. That's a one. Um, actually, wait a second. Yeah, two. Minus one for a torpedo attack. It's only a one. Equal to less than the AA level, it's reduced, which AA level is two, so we actually are hit. Bummer. So Kate takes a hit here. It is reduced. All right. Um, let's see here. And then, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do our finish up our attack here. Sorry, just got distracted for a second. Um, we're going to finish off our uh, torpedo attack. So we rolled a six. Um, so in this case, it would be six minus our bomb, which just makes it three. Um, add that, which is one. So it makes it four. Subtract two for torpedo attack. So it makes it a two. You compare two to three. There's a difference of one. Half that, it's 0.5. Round back up to one. So we do one hit. It's only one hit on Battleship Pro. That's kind of a bummer there. All right. And that was it. Yep, that was it for our actions. Draw another card. U.S. player repair action or move to Nevada. Now they can do a repair because U.S. player, we can do a repair because we actually have damage. Actually, no, we can't because you can't do repairs on Battleship Pro. You only can do repairs to installation. So still can't do anything. Again, first turn especially, you can't do anything. All right, Japanese player gets two actions. Let's go ahead. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send in this Kate and I'm going to send in the Val for dive bombing. That's what we're going to do here. So, let's go ahead and do the Kate first, conducting his torpedo attack. Go ahead and roll for anti-aircraft. Uh, torpedo, so that's minus one, so that's a five. And we go ahead and compare it to the anti-aircraft level. It's higher, so we're not hit. So we go ahead and conduct our bomb, bombing attack itself. We want to roll low, not too bad here. So three, uh, minus our five, makes it a negative two. Add the little level of one, makes it a negative one. Um, minus two for torpedo, makes it a negative three compared to our five. That's a difference of eight, divide in half, that's four. So four hits on Battleship Row. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, I mean 11? Yeah, 11, four hits, my bad. All right, so. 11 hits on Battleship Row. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, and then our Val over here, we had, we're going to go ahead and attack um, Fort Island here. Um, dive Bombers, we're going to go ahead and drop our Dive Bombs here. Do our Dive Bombing attack. Now remember, like I said before, the only time we've been taking anti-aircraft fire on Battleship Row, that's automatic as we attack in uh, Fort Island or any other installations. It's only if the U.S. player has actions to take and we're still overhead. So we're not going to have to suffer anti-aircraft first. We just go ahead and attack. All right, so, uh, oh, I don't think that's good. Um, so it's a six minus the four for our bombing uh, makes it a two. Add the alert level makes it a three. Subtract one for dime bombing, that's a two. Um, two compared to four is two, divided one is one. So one hit, so we inflict one hit on uh, Fort Island. Yeah, that's pretty lame. 
All right, and that was it for our actions that turn. Okay, four actions, all right, perfect. Let's go ahead, we're actually gonna get all these guys out of here. So, uh, Kate here, oops, make sure I don't send him back in. Kate here, get him out of there. And then also this, uh, the Val, we're gonna go ahead and get him out of there. All right, so that was three of them, so we have one action left. Let's go ahead and send in um, looks like we got three vowels, and then we have some zero fighters. We don't really need our fighters at the moment. We could send them in, but I'm not. I'm not. Not feeling it. I'd like to send in the bombers the first turn, especially that way you can inflict the most damage. Because it's not till the second turn that the U.S. has a chance to start getting their fighters in action to start shooting down your guys. So, um, go ahead and put that vowel on there. That's all four of our actions. So on to the next card. All right, four actions. Perfect. See. <laughs> We drew so poorly at the beginning, now it's going to be nothing but like red numbers for us. So, Japanese player, four actions. Um, let's go ahead and send the Die Bomber in to attack Fort Island. That's one. We have three more actions left. Um, let's go ahead and send in both vowels. That's two, three. And we'll send in a zero just for cover for the future. So, perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so our Val uh, dive bomber is going to go ahead and conduct his dive bombing attack. Go ahead and roll. A five minus four is one. Um, add the alert level, which is one, so it goes up to two. Minus one for a dive bombing attack makes it back down to one. One compared to four, difference is three. Have that 1.5, round up to two. So two hits on Fort Island. So we're up to three hits. Still not that great, but it is what it is. So um, that was him. These guys are there. Yep, that was it. So all of our actions. So we draw again. Three Japanese player actions. Perfect. All right. Okay. Um, hmm. um, for our three actions, let's go ahead and send the... Two Val Dive Bombers, of course. Attack Ford Field. Let's keep at it. Keep after it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll... Our third one, we'll have this Val return. So that's our three actions. So first Val conducts his Dive Bombing attack. I'm trying to go roll low. Roll, roll low. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. So now we're going to do some serious hits. So we roll to one. Minus four for our Bomb Factor. So that's a negative three um, plus one. So we're at negative two. Um, take away another one for being a dive bombing attack. Uh, that's negative three. Negative three compared to the four, because the difference of seven. Divide in half, that's three and a half. That round up four hits. So we do have four hits on Fort Island. One, two, three, four, boom. Now we're up to seven. That's perfect. Because it's, I think, for VPs for every five. So now we're at seven. We're guaranteed victory points. And we may want to try to get to ten. So let's do. So it's Val. He's going to attack right here. Roll low, roll low. Bummer. All right. Four minus four is zero. Um, plus one. It's total of one. Minus one is zero. Zero to four. Difference of four. Wrong. Divided by two. It's two hits. So nine. Nine damage on Ford Island. Ooh, nice. All right, draw another card. Two Japanese player actions, perfect. Um, let's go ahead and do, well, let's go ahead and get both of these vowels off the map and head back to our carriers. All right, draw another card. Five Japanese player actions, okay. Um, so, all we have left are our zeros. I wanna check something here, because I'm not sure. I never, geez, my other games, I never really had a lot of opportunities to attack with the zeros a lot. It was usually just, uh, Let's see. Sorry, I mean to like I said this is a casual game. It's not the usual, so I'm familiarizing myself with rules too. Um Japanese zero fighters can perform strafing attacks, provide a protection during a bomber's attack. What? That's not gonna work. We're not doing any of that, so really, I don't even think we have anything left as the Japanese player here. You know, 
Um, all we have are zeros, but there's nothing to attack. They can't attack anything. They're just recovering. So we're not going to take any actions, I guess. So now we're kind of looking for that end turn. Boom. There we go. Next card. End turn end. So this would be in the deck of cards would be the Joker. So turn end. So very nice. So what did you do at the end of the turn? You leave any bombers on the map. We had already sent all of ours back, thankfully. Um, zero fighters. Any fighters, U.S. or uh, Japanese, you send back as well. Let's go ahead and rotate all of our fighters back, or excuse me, our bombers, so that we know they are ready to roll. And then you also, they are put back on full strength. And then you'll see we're going to do a little bit of a roll to see what happens if they're able to return, all return at full strength. You'll see what I mean. Okay. And this shows the decreasing, it'll show the decreasing effectiveness of the, of the airstrikes over time here. So... Um, all right, double check here. So it's the end of the turn. That means we are going to, like I said, remove those air units. Um, turn marker goes up, game turn marker goes to two. Attack group first wave goes to number two there. The, oh yeah, yep, the anti-aircraft level and the alert level. So the level goes up to two. Anti-aircraft was already at two because it got bumped up for those that event, so it goes to three. Um, all right, and now what we will do is we will check to see now the rules. It's got a couple things all over, kind of spread around on the rules a little bit, so that's why I kind of got to jump around a little bit in the rules. It's a little bit of a bummer, um, especially a bummer for you guys watching. I know, sorry. Starting with turn two, a um, couple things. One, we're able to move, the U.S. can move the Nevada, so not yet, but they have to have that card, right? Um, but they get to see if their fighters, so the P-40 Warhawk and the P-36 Hawk, actually have a chance to come out. So make a die roll. So the first one here, the P40, so it's a two. And what you do is you add pl plus one for every five hits on Hickam Field, plus one for every five hits on Ford Naval Station, which Ford Island has nine, so that's only one. So plus one, so we roll two, plus one is three. Um, if it's equal to the alert level, or alert level's two, the fighter's available to reduce strength. If it's greater, the fighter's not available. If it's less than, so what do we roll? Two plus one, right, a three. So we roll a greater than the alert level. Okay, it's not available, so we don't get the P-40. How about the P-36 Hawk? Three plus one, four, again, yep, not available. So basically, they're the two U.S. fighters are not available yet this turn. Bummer for the U.S. Another example of why the U.S. player, you know, it's it'd be unfortunate to be playing at the U.S. in this game because first few turns, you'd be doing nothing but just taking, taking shots from the Japanese. So, all right. Okay. So what we will do, go ahead and shuffle up the deck here, coming back in there. And here is where you kind of start going and whatever draw you, you get, you get, other than um, each player gets, I want to flip around, it did. Um, each player gets at least one activation before the turn end. So if one player gets an activation, then you draw a turn end marker, you set it aside, the other player gets an activation, and then you shuffle it back in with the remaining. Something like that anyway. I think I keep flipping these over. I'm not trying to do that. Um, all right. So, and then one other thing we do. So we're going to have this deck ready. Call it ready. Go ahead and check the rules for the unit deployment. So the Japanese air units. Turn two, first wave, second attack group. All Japanese air units that are not already in play are available for use, which none are in play anymore because we've got all of our bombers off the map. They're available for use in the second turn. A number of Japanese air units equal to the U.S. alert level, which is two are subject to do a die roll check. If the die roll is greater than the U.S. alert level, their unit enters the game at full strength. If the die roll is less than or equal to the U.S. level, their unit enters the game at reduced strength. Um, so, let's go ahead and, let's see. Okay, yeah, so when we, uh, when we're gonna have them, let's do it now, actually, might as well. Um, we'll roll it now. I think that's fine. So basically what we're doing is rolling to see if they're going to reduce strength. So we got to check. We want to get higher than a two. So we want to get three or higher. Okay, perfect. And then, okay. So we'll flip this zero here over to reduce. Just to show the kind of the wear and tear, um, possible damage from friendly or enemy fire. Well, they were friendly fire. Who knows? Um, that happened to our unit. That's not shown on that game. Right. So just 
that'll happen over time here. You'll have more and more units that kind of enter in each turn weaker and weaker, or even eliminated entirely. And if they get eliminated entirely, then the American player um, gets victory points for it. So, all right, I think that is it. I think we're ready to go. Yep, let's go ahead and start drawing. And well, I don't know if we'll make it, looking at the time, what are we at, half an hour now? Yeah, I don't. we're not going to make it through a full game, but that's okay. Um, probably play for a little while, just show this game off, kind of have some fun with it. All right, it's so U.S. player action, so that is okay. They get to go twice. Um, and well, it would be okay, except they don't really have anything going on um, other than they can't move the Nevada because that's a special card, and they don't get any sort of um, I mean, they're fighters. There's nothing to attack anyway, so it's wasted actions for them. That's all right. It's way part of the draw, so wasted for them. Wasted for them. Maybe I should have shuffled better. Wasted for them. There we go. Japanese player action, four Japanese player actions. All right, let's go ahead. Let's keep up. We need Ford Island, do some damage on Ford Island. Let's go ahead and get these Kates out there. Or it's not the Kates, excuse me, the Vals. So let's go ahead and get, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get all four Vals out there ready to rock and roll. All right, let's draw again. Three US player actions, perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll send um, the vowels, let's go ahead and send, uh, well, let's send three of them to Fort Island, right? Should we do that? Well, send one to Fort Island, shouldn't we? Hmm. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send one to Fort Island, and we're gonna send two of them over to Hickam Field here. And duck their attacks, their dive bomb attacks. All right, usual deal here. Let's go ahead and, uh, and pull it up, because sometimes I forget all the modifiers. I like to have it ready to rock and roll. Because we're attacking installations, no automatic anti-aircraft fire. Instead, we'll just uh, drop our bombs here. So dive bomb, let's go ahead and do the one up on Fort Island here. Let's give us a roll. Uh, four, minus four is zero. Um, add the alert level, which is two. That's two. And then minus one for dive bomb makes it one. So one difference between one and four is three. Have that one and a half, round up, two hits. So two hits on Fort Island. So it goes from nine. 10 to 11. Perfect. That's good. Like I said, um, that'll bump us up on the victory points. So now we're here and hit up a uh, old Hickam field here. First one, give us a roll. Six. Oh, that sucks. So six minus four is two plus two is four minus one for dive bomb makes it three. Difference between three and four is one. Have that, but then round up one hit. Only one hit on Hickam field. That's a horrible roll. And now the second vowel five so i think that'll be the same thing because five minus four is one plus two for the alert level makes it three minus one is two difference between two and four is two have that one you have one hit so boom bummer all right that was it for japanese action you japanese all right you're good four all right so what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and return these two for two of them one two um send this vowel to Hickam Field, three. And then let's go ahead and get one of these Kates out here, four, okay? So this Val, let's go ahead and conduct their dive bomb attack on Hickam Field. Uh, horrible, we already knew if we roll a six, all the modifiers, it's gonna be um, one hit. So terrible rolling though, that's too bad. And that was it, so on to the next card. Five US player actions, okay, so here's now, here here's where it's gonna start causing trouble for us. U.S. player, um, it's one of their actions, can do uh, ant conduct anti-aircraft fire against uh, Japanese fighters or bombers that are over their installations. We have two, one here, one here. So they're going to start shooting at them. Um, yeah. So what you do, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, a second. Uh, All right, sorry, just looking at the, double checking the rules here, guys. I know, not very exciting, but that's part of a, well, this casual one is I do not have the rules memorized. Um, not that I ever do, really, let's be honest, right? Who can who can memorize these rules, these games? Too complicated. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and roll for the anti-aircraft. Let's go ahead and attack the Val up here with one attack. They have five attacks, so we'll do like two and three, I guess. So yeah, two and three. So two attacks against the Val here. It's gonna be, um, they're gonna roll, and then a, 
a plus one because we're conducting a dive bomb attack on both of these. So it's going to be plus one for each roll. What they have to do is they have to get equal or less than the AA level. So if they roll a two, so if they roll a one or a two, it's going to be a hit. If they roll three or higher, they're going to be misses because of the plus one. So we're going to do two attacks and three attacks. Remember, one or two hits. That's a hit. All right, that's a miss. And then three down here. That's a miss. That's a miss. And that's a miss. So anti-aircraft wasn't very effective, um, especially at the beginning of beginning of the war there. So, all right, uh, that's it for the U.S. player. Let's go ahead and roll another card. Uh, draw another card. U.S. player repair action or move the USS Nevada. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get the Nevada moving. So how it rule, how it works is that when the Nevada moves, it moves out of Battleship Row and it moves to this A location. And then you go ahead and, um, sorry if you guys can hear my dog barking in the background. Um, you move them to A, remember those letters A, B, C, D, trying to move out of the harbor. Uh, move them to A. And then what you do actually do is you subtract three damage from Battleship Row. So it was at 11, so it'll go 10, nine, eight. So actually it's only at eight damage now. It basically represent the damage that had been inflicted to the USS Nevada as it leaves. So interesting little rule here. So that's it there. Let's go ahead, do another draw, turn end. Oh no, that sucks. Okay, sucks for us as the Japanese. So, all right, so any fighters go back. Um, bombers stay out there though. So this is where, remember last time I was trying to get the bombers back. Well now, you know, they're, they're stuck out there. So it's not gonna be as useful. Um, for us in the future so kind of a bummer there um let's go ahead um get the fighters like i said there are no fighters out there let's go ahead and move up the game turn and wave markers go up us lower level goes up aa level goes up and we'll go ahead and uh check back around and while we're shuffling we're also going to see if the us will get their um, get their two fighters in this turn Let's see, double check what I have to roll because I forgot. Um, plus one for every five hits right on the fields here. So we got uh, Hickam Field is three hits. Fort Island has plus one for every five hits on Fort Island. So we're at 11, so it's a total of two. So plus two, plus two to the die roll. Plus two, it has to be a less than one equal. Uh, all right, so. They may come in damage or they're not going to come in at all. So let's see. For a one, they come in damaged. A two, see, it's two plus um, two is four. It's higher than the lower level, so he doesn't come in. It's roll a one. That's for that one. That's for this one. Three, it doesn't come in either. So as your lower level gets higher, it's more likely to be less than. So although it is counteracted by the more damage you have on Hickam Field and Ford Naval Station, um, the more that it's lower, the less likely they will be as well. So part of that's part of the Japanese player, you know, right wanting to cause damage to those fields, keep the US from getting fighters up, which is historically accurate. Trying a little better a little better shuffle this time, maybe. It's hard to shuffle these tiny little cards. Ugh, flopping all over the place. So you guys can see I have been off camera with it. So I'm trying to zoom in a little bit on so you guys can see, because this is a smaller map, which is fine with me. It's a quick, easy game. Um this just takes more time because if I'm explaining everything, you guys know how that goes. So, uh, okay, there's the turn end marker. See, uh, it's an easier way. I don't think I can do like a traditional shuffle. Let's try one of these tiny little cards. Here's it. It's a big, when you have big American hands, thick fingers, it's, it's not super easy to sit there and, yeah, it's, it's not going to work at all. I'm just I'm annihilating everything here. You guys are seeing some good uh, good video in here, guys, right? Enjoy this one. Leave comments below if you like what you see. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> if content like this, how can you not? All right. Uh, do a couple, couple more. Let's do a couple more regular shuffles or side shuffle, whatever you want to call this. I'm trying to get some. Here we go. Let's just play. All right. Then we have everything set. Um, now what we do, because we're on the... Unit deployment, um, remember with our Japanese units, we are at turn three, first wave, third attack group. All Japanese air units that are already available are just blah, 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 blah. Um, subject to a die roll. Remember the 
um, alert level is now three because that went up. So three Japanese units are subject to a die roll check. So good. this one doesn't doesn't apply to him. He gets flipped back. All right. So um, again, we're gonna go ahead and roll. We're gonna roll three of them for three different units here. It has to be. We want to roll greater than the alert level. Greater than the alert level is three. So we want to roll four, five, or six. So that's one is good. One is not good. Um, and two is good. So one is not good. I'm going to go ahead and just flip that zero back over to reduced. It'll start getting worse and worse as the level goes up. And we just have to roll for more and more units. So again, like I said, it's more of a gradual loss of the Japanese combat effectiveness over time. All right, let's go ahead and draw. Get started. Two U.S. player actions. All right, they're going to go ahead and shoot at uh, both of these. So you're going to go ahead and, let's see. Yep, go ahead and anti-aircraft. So a one. Pull up the anti-aircraft again. Again, I do not have this memorized, which I did. Make the game a little quicker, especially for you guys. But all right, so we rolled a one um, against the Kate here. Or the Val, excuse me, Val. He is a, what is he, a die bomber. So plus one, so that is a two. If it's greater than a, nothing happens. If it's equal than or less than, he is reduced. If I reduce, the air unit is eliminated. Okay. So he's eliminated. Um, yeah, it's not permanently eliminated, just eliminated for now. All right. Goes there. Now the other attack down here. This guy. That's a five. Plus one for dive bomb. A six. And we wanted the Americans wanted equal or less than the A, which is four. So no hit. Japanese player random event. I told a five. No event. <laughs> All right. Nothing happens. Next card. There we go. Three Japanese actions. Let's go ahead, first one, let's go ahead and get this Val out of here. Oh, I wanna make sure he's, uh... first of all, I forgot to move these guys back. I just wanna make sure I know what's available. He is not available, remember, because he just went back. He's not available until next turn. Um, which I think he is limited, my bad. All right, so that was one of my actions, I have two more. Let's go ahead and get, um... Let's get some, let's get a torpedo bomber to attack, or to come onto the map, excuse me. Um, so we got one to remove, one brought him on, so we have one action left. Let's get this torpedo bomber to attack the USS Nevada here. Now, when you're attacking Nevada, I believe it's the same as Battleship Row in general. Okay, yep, so we're gonna go ahead and conduct our attack. Um, so basically we just conduct a regular attack. Um, torpedo bomber attack, that is. Let me see if it's gonna be... Okay, so we are gonna suffer an anti-grab attack. So here's how this works. So we're attacking. Kate is gonna attack the USS Nevada. Flip her over. Um, we have to roll against air and aircraft because they are gonna shoot at us. So they rolled four. It's torpedo attack, so it's plus, it's minus one. So that's a three. Um, compared to the anti-aircraft level, it's four. It's less than or equal. The target unit is reduced, so the Kate, or Kate is reduced. However, we still get to continue our attack. So we're still attacking. Um, go ahead and give ourselves a roll. Roll to two, which is good. Um, minus the...
Oh, I see. Because it's, it's conducted a little differently. So as we roll to C, 2, minus the 3, negative 1, blah, blah, blah. It'd be a hit. So it is a hit. But we don't figure number of hits on Nevada. What we do is actually roll an, again. Second die roll is rolled. Um, add 1 if it's a hit. was caused by a torpedo attack. If it, so 3 plus 1 is a 4 compared to the alert level. If it's equal or less, nothing happens. If it's greater than the alert level, the U.S. has Nevada is flipped to its crippled side. Perfect. So it is damaged. Boom. All right, so it is damaged. All right, there we go. And that's it for this turn. Another card, five Japanese actions. There we go. So let's go ahead and get this uh, um, Kate out of here. Go ahead and send, so it's one action, two, three. I'm sending a Val, four. And then this Kate, um, Torpedo Bomber, so go ahead and send him against the Nevada. So he's going to go ahead and get uh, anti-aircraft fired. Which five, run back to it. Um, it's doing a torpedo attack minus one, so it's a four. It's greater than the four. Oh, actually, it's equal, so he does take a hit. Oh, that's why that high anti aircraft level is starting to hurt me. Hurt me bad. I'll go ahead and roll to see if we get any hits. Five minus three, or excuse me, yeah, five minus three is two. Um, minus one. All right, hang on. Five minus three. It's two plus three. It's a total of five. Minus two is three. So three minus three is zero. So we'd have no hits on this one. We rolled too poorly. So no hits against uh, Nevada, unfortunately. So, all right, that's it. Japanese player random event check. Nine. Uh, critical hit, add another damage point to any successful Japanese attack against Battleship Row, Hickam Field, or the Ford Naval Air Station. If you have a critical hit marker, go ahead and put that on here so if I remember. I didn't last time, but that's okay. Draw again. U.S. player action gets five actions. However, I'm looking, and they don't have any available actions. Um, the Nevada... Yeah, it only moves with the special draw. And we don't have any, um, you know, none of our bombers or anything are overhead, any of those other units or installations. They can't suffer air attack. So no actions take place for the U.S. Same thing there. U U.S. can't do anything. Here we go. Repair action or Nevada. I'm, I think we're going to try to move it. Go ahead and move it down to B. Draw again. Four U.S. player actions. Nothing they can do. U.S. player uh, repair or move Nevada. They're definitely going to move it, so they're going to move it from B to C. Again, repair or move Nevada. They're going to move it to D. And then, again, turn end. Okay. Again, another bummer kind of for the Japanese here. So, what you do at this point... I think we're going to stop this video at an hour. I really don't want to spend all day... Um, Showing this game off to you guys. I'm sure you guys have better things to do yourselves. You get to see it in action a little bit here. And we, we're not done yet, though. We'll do another turn at least here. So let's get another turn knocked up before we call it. So um, what we're looking at, let's go ahead and shuffle this. Classic. Let's do the turn end. Remember, any fighters go off the board? This wouldn't be used anymore because we've got to use it. Bombers stay. So all the bombers are here. They stay. There's no fighters anyway. So no big deal. Um, the U.S. turn marker and... Our attack group from the first wave gets replaced by the second wave marker. And what level goes up to four, anti-aircraft level goes up to five. Ooh, not good for us. All right. Now let's check to see which, um, if the um, Americans get any of their fighters in this turn. Remember their P-40 Warhawk and the P-36 Hawk. Um, what are we looking at here? If I can find it. It's a lot of rule book flipping in this one, even though it's a small rule book. So I'll have to basically go back, because there's so much stuff you have to check that's kind of different each turn. At least that's what I found. So, I didn't make a cheat sheet for this game either, so that, that doesn't help. Alright. Dire roll check. Plus one for every five hits on Hickam. Plus one for every five on Ford Nable. Hickam's got three, no big deal. Ford has exactly ten. As 11, so that's plus 2. Yep, so plus 2 to the die roll. Let's check for the first one. We have to roll less than the alert level. It's plus 2. 
If it's equal, it comes in reduced. If it rolls higher. So if we roll a two, excuse me, what is it? Plus two, two. Let's just roll and see what happens. Three plus two is five. Comes in higher, so no good. A two plus two is four. Equal to the lower level, which means the hawk is going to come in, but it's going to be reduced already. It's going to be weaker. So bummer for bummer for the Americans. Although he's out there, he can start inflicting damage on uh, the Japanese Japanese units. All right. All right, let's get through uh, another turn here. So let's go ahead and start drawing. First one, US player action gets two actions. Ah, so what he's gonna do, obviously he has his fighter, he's gonna go ahead and attack. So he's gonna go ahead and send him to attack. Um, now what, what it does, it actually, and again, this is another example of why really it's more of a solitary game, is that the US player with his uh, fighter has to attack Japanese units in a certain order. Um, Japanese fighters first, which I have no fighters out there. He then attacks the dive bombers which I have one dive bomber, and then he would attack torpedo bombers last. So this Warhawk, no, Warhawk, excuse me, Hawk, P-36 Hawk, so you can go after the Val dive bomber there. So he's going to go a little air-to-air uh, -air combat here. Go ahead and give him a roll. So we rolled a two. We'll subtract our combat value, air-to-air -air combat, which is, remember, the top number. So it's a two. So that gets to zero. Add the defending units combat, which the Val has a two, so that goes back up to a two. Um, if the die roll result is greater than the fighter's combat, nothing happens. If it's equal or less, then the defending air unit is reduced. Oh, so he got me. Just got me. All right. All right, now with his second action, he's going to go ahead and attack again. He's going to attack the same Val. All right, so I think he's going to miss now. We'll see though. So we have a five minus his two makes it three. Add my combat, which is air combat, which is one, makes it a four. Um, if it's greater than his attack, air combat, nothing happens. So it's only because he rolled lower number earlier that he got a hit on him. So All right, that's it for the Americans. All right, repair action or move the Nevada. They are going to move the Nevada. So they move it off the map, which if the US player moves Nevada off the map, they get victory points. Do, do, do. Um, one or two. Uh, I suppose it's based on whether he's reduced or not, maybe. So they get one or two victory points. Okay. Yep. So one because he's evaded cripple. So we get one point for that. So. Because the, the unit was crippled when it escaped. Um, you get one victory point for the U.S. there. Okay. All right. Um, bummer. Bummer for the Japanese player anyway, for us. USA player, repair action, or move Nevada. So now we are finally can do a repair action. Because I don't think that's super important at the moment. We want to get the Nevada out of here for that victory point. But U.S. player now is going to do a repair for sure. So we can do some repair and installation. With a certain die roll, Fort Island, Hickam filled are both damage. Fort Island's at 11. Let's go ahead and try to reduce that to 10. So we'll go ahead and roll for the repair. Go ahead and give us a die roll. Um, equal, we want it to be less than or equal to the US alert level. US alert level is four, it's six. So if the level's greater than the alert level, nothing happens. Repair attempt was unsuccessful, bummer. Japanese player random event. 12, which is Kairu mini sub attack. All right. So our Kairu uh, mini subs and go ahead and appear on the D right here. And go ahead and start doing actions with him as well. One Japanese action. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our, uh, let's get a zero out there to fight this P36 Hawks. Well, that'll be our one action. A card, repair action or move Nevada. Clearly they're going to try to do a repair. Same thing, they're going to try to repair Fort Island. And roll greater than the alert level, so no effect. Another card draw, Japanese player random event. 10 Hornet's Nest, increase the US alert level by one. Awesome to max a five. That's great. 
Also subtract one from the US player's die roll check for fighters this turn. For fighters this turn. What? I already did it though. I don't know. Whatever. It, it's no good for me. No good for Japanese say that. All right, two actions. Let's go ahead and send the zero after the P36 Hawk here. So we do a little air-to-air -air combat. Roll to six. Um, minus four is two. Plus two is four. So no effect because he rolled horribly. Um, and then the last action, we're going to go ahead. We will... Uh, what should we do here? Um, Battleship Row, right? So let's go ahead and send this Kate to do Dive Bomb Battleship Row, or Torpedo Bomb, excuse me. Roll for anti-aircraft. So anti-aircraft is, once I get back to it, so I can have it up here again. Um, we're doing Torpedo Attack, so we rolled a, rolled three. It's torpedo Attack, minus one, so makes it a two. Um, if it's equal to less than the AA level, which is five, it's a hit. So he's reduced, but we still need to conduct our actual torpedo attack. All right, so four minus three is one. Add whichever's lower here, which is about five, so that's six. Uh, minus two for torpedo attack puts it back at four. The difference between four, three is negative one, so no, no bombing hits whatsoever. That sucks. All right, next card. Five Japanese player actions. All right, let's go ahead and have zero attack the Hawk again for one. And we're going to go ahead and move this Kate to Hickam Field. And then the Kate, or excuse me, the Val Dive Bomber to Hickam Field. And we'll go ahead and send this Kate into Battleship Row as well. So, all right, let's do the zero first, though. And how many, how many was that? We said that was one, two, three, right? So we still have two more actions. Let's go ahead and move up Kairu to C. One action left, let's go ahead and send in a Val Dive Bomber. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll get this all figured out here in a second. So let's go ahead and do the zero first. We'll air to air combat. Ah, uh, that's a miss again. Can we roll the six? Horrible. All right. Um, do the Val's gonna do his attack on Hickam Field here. A one. So the Dive Bomb attack. So it is all right, one uh, minus a two, that's a negative one. Add this, which is five, so that makes it four. Subtract one for die bombing attacks, so that makes it three. Um, and if it's greater than the bomb attack factor, nothing happens, so nothing happened. That's, that's with the alert level and the anti aircraft level so high, it's really hard to get our get our hits down here, unfortunately. So um, we'll do the Kate up here, Torpedo Bomber. First, he's going to suffer anti-aircraft attack. Rolled one. Uh, minus one for Torpedo. That's negative one. It's going to be a hit. He's definitely hit. All right. And now we'll go ahead and do our conduct our Torpedo attack. Three. Minus three is zero. Um, plus the alert level of five. So that makes it five. Minus two for Torpedo attack makes it three. It's the same numbers, three and three, so no effect there. Ooh, this is brutal for us. All right, was that it, I think? Because we did this, him, him, him. He did his attack already. Everyone moved, right? Yeah, that's it. All right, so let me just play a random event. All right, 11. Snafu. Decrease the US alert level by one. Nice. This event can only occur once in a turn, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. All right. Have a player action, four actions. Um, let's go ahead and get Zero's gonna attack the Hawk again because I'm trying to get rid of him. Boom, I think we got him now. So three minus four, negative one. Add the two, makes it one, which is less than the four. So he's a hit, which he is eliminated. Perfect. That's one. Kairu is gonna move him up to B. Two. The Val's gonna go ahead and attack Hickam Field. And then let's go ahead and get, uh, let's get this Val uh, out of here, off the map. So, boom, okay. All right, so we just have the one attack to conduct right here. The Val here is gonna conduct his dive bombing attack on Hickam Field. 
Oh, man, it's horrible. So, I mean, it's going to be no hit. It's going to be 6. Minus 4 is 2. Plus it level 4. Makes it 6. Uh, more than the attack, so no effect. Bummer. Uh, that's it. Draw another card. Three Japanese player actions. Okay. Let's go ahead and start getting these guys out of here. So, 1... Two, oh, and then three, move the Cairo closer. Trying to get some of these units out of here. All right, draw again. Japanese player action, four actions. All right, so now the Cairo is at four. He's gonna go ahead and launch his torpedoes and attacks. What you do is you flip him over. It's one of our four actions, by the way. Um, flip him over, and you go ahead and roll to see what his attack factor is. Roll to two, actually, which means he was eliminated. So you can see there's a little chart on the back. So he rolls a two, which means he is eliminated, which when you look at it is uh, the he's eliminated. He's sunk and removed from the game. The U.S. player gets one victory point. Oh, fantastic. So they get another victory point for that. That's just great. Okay. I think that was, nope, that was one, right? And so let's go ahead and get these guys out of here as well. So retreat. Um... And really, that's going to be it for us. We're not going to do anything else. Um, the last one, I guess, get the fighter off the board. Doesn't really matter. Um, two player actions. We don't have any actions left available. All of our aircraft are basically going back, being refueled. Event check. It's kind of how I look at it. It's like, hey, they're going back to be refueled and everything. So, a six. Um, okay. The, they get the Medal of Honor, the minus one to anti aircraft. Japanese player action. We're not going to take any actions. Not going to take any actions. Hoping for the end turn card here. Four player, they don't have any actions for the US. Nothing they can do. Same thing for me. We're just hoping for the end turn. Boom, end turn. Um, okay. So we're going to call it right there. Um, just because, like I said, I want to keep going, going. You guys get the idea. You guys see how the game plays. It's it's interesting. It's interesting for sure. Um, we're about halfway through, or more than halfway through now. So we completed, we're on our fourth turn. We finished the fourth turn. So what's going to happen? Just give you guys an idea here. Um, obviously, check the map. Everything's clear. We're all fine. We have we've lost one valve so far. Not too bad um, of all of our guys. All of our aircraft will be back at full strength. However, so we move everything over to five. Our little goes up to five. Not good for us. So one of the nice things is, is all these damaged aircraft we had are actually back at full strength for the most part. However, what happens is when you look at... So remember a couple things. One, um, we would check to see if they get their aircraft back, or the U.S. gets their aircraft. And theirs doesn't matter if it's destroyed or not. They have a ch good chance to get them back, which since they're checking against the alert level, and it's so so high now. Uh, let's see, plus two, so six, seven, eight. Well, that wouldn't work. That one didn't get them back. But, and that one didn't get back either. Never mind, they didn't get them back. Or they didn't get them, I should say. Um, this goes away. Now what we do is we would check against actually what do we had here about an hour we only got two turns left we might as well finish off the game what do you think so here's what we'll do we'll finish off the game so i'll just show you guys so here we have so this is the turn we're starting turn five here turn five second wave second attack group all japanese units that are not available that are not already in play are available for use uh a number of Japanese agents equals to the U.S. alert level. Japanese player choice is subjected to a die roll check. Uh, if it's greater than your level, it enters the game at full strength. If it's equal or less, they enter at reduced. Die roll equals one. Oh, that's, yeah, that's horrible. So. So here's where you start losing units. So, for instance, we have a... Um, our alert level, Japanese alert level is five. Or U.S. alert level, excuse me, is five. So let's go ahead and roll against that. Yeah, we'll just play out the rest of the game, I guess. Right? Might as well. We only got two turns left. Let's do it. Let's get through it. All right. We have five units we're going to have to roll for. Now, what we want to do is we want to get... Um, we want to get sixes because then they're not... Basically, if we roll a one, the unit is eliminated. If we roll a two through five, the unit is comes in reduced. If we roll a six, the unit is... Fine. So let's go ahead and start with the top zero. So we'll five of these. 
he's fine. So number two, he is reduced. And I'm picking on the zeros because I know that they're the least viable to me right now. It says player choice, reduced, so I don't care. And then six, so just fine. And then one more, right? Yep, five of them. So let's go ahead and pick, uh, let's pick one of these Kates. Let's pick a Kate on the bottom here. A four, so he is reduced as well. So it's all right, that's all right, it's okay. Um, yeah, might as well finish the game since we're already, only got two turns left, right? Six turn games, the game goes pretty quick. Again, it goes a little slower because I'm explaining things and you know, whatever, talk, talk to the camera and all that stuff. But we're just playing by yourself. You'll fly right through it, fly right through it, so. Once again, getting the cards mixed up a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and I think um, let's go ahead and check for we check for the aircraft yet. No, we did. Yeah, they didn't make it. So let's go ahead and start drawing. All right. U.S. player action. No actions available. U.S. player action. No actions available. Uh, U.S. player. No actions available. U.S. player. No actions available. Luck of the draw or unluck of the draw. Turn end. Now remember, um, each turn, each player gets activation. They got one of theirs. I did not get any of mine, so I get to keep drawing until I do. Okay. That is not, that's an event check. That's not an activation. So five, which is no event. Okay. So you draw again. Oh, ah. Uh. Repair or move Nevada. They can do a repair for sure. I'm gonna try to repair Fort Island here. So we rolled a six, which means, uh, what is it again for the repair? It's less than or equal to the US alert level. It's repaired. Rolled a six, so level's five, so no repair done. That sucks for them. All right, so nothing there. Oh, repair, I'll do another repair. They're going to roll five or less. And they're going to do it again on uh, Fort Island. So Fort Island yep, is reduced to 10 damage. Random event for the Japanese. I don't know what happened. 11, snafu, decrease the alert level by one. Perfect, helps me. There we go. So, well, we do two things. One, Japanese finally get an action. Second, you take the turn end marker. You go ahead and put it back in. All right. So the Japanese, we get two actions. What do we want to do here? We want to keep up the damage on, we don't get more on Battleship Row and more on Hickam Field. So let's do Battleship Row. We have two, so let's go ahead and just send in two Kates. Right, draw again. You would repair. They're gonna try to repair Fort Island. Um, nope, if we had higher then, so no effect. Random event for the Japanese player. A lot of these. Eight. Snafu, decrease the level by one. Wait, can only occur once in a turn, so bummer. All right, turn end. Oh, okay. So that sucks for us real bad. All right. So, um, we got our two Kates out, but they don't get to do really do anything. Go ahead and flip all these bad boys back. Move our turn markers up. Last turn of the game here. Last wave coming in for the Japanese before they uh, call off their attack here. Um, we have two Kates out there, looks like. That's not too bad. Let's go ahead and roll for their the Warhawk and the Hawk. Roll four. What is it again? So, 10 damage, right? 10, so... Plus two, when they want to roll less than or equal. So four plus two is six, well, it was five, so no good. I have to roll three or less, roll a two, it's four is less than, so they're gonna get the hawk. The hawk will appear, so they get a little bit of help. All right, then we'll do our, uh, we'll do our Japanese, the second, turn six, uh, second wave, third attack group. All Japanese units that are not already in play or were not permanently eliminated are available for use in the third turn. 
a number of Japanese air units equal to the US lure level, which is five, are subjected to uh, the whole rolling thing. And remember, the same thing as before, if they roll a one, so one, they're eliminated, uh, two through five, reduced, six, just fine. Let's do our zero fighters, except we'll save one. So first zero fighter, all right, he's reduced. Second zero fighter, he is reduced. Third zero fighter, he is reduced. Um, uh, let's do one of these die bombers. He's reduced, uh, it's a bummer. And then we'll do one of the Kates. He's reduced as well. Jeez, it's terrible, wrecked me, just wrecked me. All right, that's what happened, at least he didn't lose anymore though. Um, all right, what we'll do is start rolling, or drawing, drawing, and then and then rolling maybe, right? So, US player action, they get two of them. So, his, the Hawk is definitely gonna go after my Kates here. He's gonna go ahead and start picking on one of them. Remember, he'd do fighters first, and then die bombers, but there's only Kates, the torpedo bombers. He's gonna go after a torpedo bomber. Um, go ahead and attack him. Let's see here, what do we got here? So, we do a little air-to-air -air combat. So we have our six, minus three is three. Plus my one puts it at four. If it's greater than, no effect, so I'm fine. Um, his second attack is a continue attack. Roll to two, minus three, minus one, blah, blah, blah. He definitely gets a hit. So the Kate is flipped over. All right. My action. US One US player action. He's going to keep attacking that Kate. Try to shoot him down. Four minus three is one. Plus zero, so it stays at one. Less than, yep, he's a hit. So... He eliminates uh, my Kate there. That was his last action. Uh, two US player actions, so he's gonna go after the other Kate. A one, that means he destroys him, or excuse me, uh, hurts him. And another one, he destroys him. So he just wrecked the three bombers I had. Uh, US player repair action, so you can definitely repair, try to repair Ford Island. Roll a three. Let me double check the repair rule. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, what do you have for the repair here? Die rolls compared to the US alert level. You rolled a three. The US alert level is five, so it's less than. Um, if the die roll is equal or less than, damage is lowered by one. You did Fort Island, so the 10 is reduced to nine. All right. US player gets four actions, nothing he can do, so the the hawk just kind of circles around, a little combat air patrol waiting for more Japanese to come in so we can annihilate him. Uh, repair action, yep, he's gonna repair, he'll do, let's see, what do we got, Fort Island, he might as well do Fort Island again, yep. Equal or less than alert level, so yep, he does repair, so Fort Island drops to eight. Another card, Japanese player random event. A six, John Defendor, so they get the Medal of Honor, the anti-aircraft boost, just what they needed. Two Japanese player actions, here we go. Let's go ahead and send in a zero to fight that Hawk, and then we'll send in a uh, Valve Dive Bomber as well. All right, next card, three US player actions. So he's gonna go after our zero, which is three, so it'll be five minus three is two, plus the four, greater than, no damage. 3, minus 3 is 0, plus 4, greater than, no damage. He has to roll it. Roll the 2 or less, it's a hit. Okay, there you go with the last one, so reduces him. US player action. He's going to try to finish off the fighter there. 5 minus 3 is 2, plus 2 is 4, puts it over, so no effect. Repair or Nevada, they're going to repair uh, Ford again. Less, equal less than the other level, so... Ford Island is repaired some more. Japanese player event check. Uh, six. There you have that, so no big deal. Turn end. And we already did, we did get a ac um, action, right? Yeah, we got our, we got some guys out there. Okay, so that is the end of the game. That is the end of the turn here. Um, so basically, everyone clear out. You know, these guys, yeah, get out of there. And need to turn to base. Very successful to go star in the movie Pearl Harbor. Um, so now we check victory points. 
here's what we do. Uh, look at the U.S. So each eliminated Japanese unit, which was three of them. They're at two. So that's three. One, two, three. I put some at five. Um, all right, so they're at five. Um, and we get, for every five hits on Battleship Row, which we end up down, down to nine, or excuse me, eight, we get two victory points. So, and what we do is we take it away from the, so we got two, so it drops them to three. Uh, one VP for every 10 hits on Hickam Airfield and Ford Naval Air Station. So, so it's seven and three, so it's total of 10, so that's one, so it drops them down to two. Um, every five hits on the tank farms, no, oh, blah. Okay, so less than less than good. So we finished with three, two U.S. victory points. Um, we have to subtract the U.S. total from the Japanese. Uh, well, it's sort of negative. We're at, we're at negative two. So the lowest it goes is zero. We're worse than the worst seeing you do. So we just did a horrible, horrible, horrible game. Um, U.S. victory. It says, although stunned and humiliated by the Japanese attack and damage to the U.S. fleet and Anchorage is not that severe. U.S. war plan orders quickly put into effect and a significant U.S. fleet sorties in a few weeks to escort reinforcements to the Philippines. This thwarts the Japanese invasion of those critical islands and allows General MacArthur to take to the offensive by the first anniversary of the day they will live in infamy. The Japanese gamble has utterly failed. The war will likely end in about two years with a negotiated surrender and collapse of the Japanese empire. There you go. So that is Day of Infamy. Uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941 from... High Flying Dice Games. Uh, Paul Rohrbaugh. Graphics Bruce Yurian. A fun little game. Um, High Flying Dice Games. Fun little game. Super cheap. Uh, inexpensive, I should say. Right? Cheap sounds bad. It's inexpensive. Um, if you want to check it out, go to their website. Uh, just Google it. I don't know the exact website offhand. Google it. Check it out. Uh, so they have a ton of other of these types of inexpensive games you can look at. Again, this one is not under the solitaire, but as you guys saw, I'd say that it pretty much is basically a solitaire game. You know, you play as a Japanese, kind of system kind of plays as the Americans and go from there. So uh, let me know what you think of this video. We went on, what, about an hour and 20 minutes? It's all right, nice casual playthrough. We got to play through the whole game, have some fun with it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you liked it, you know the spiel. Give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed and you've watched this far, you need to subscribe. Because if, if you're gonna watch me for an hour and 20 minutes playing this game that I didn't even really know that well, you should probably just subscribe because I got a lot of other great videos out there as well. So otherwise, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think. And uh, we got plenty of games in the pipeline. Till then, guys. Later.